Hey Pixlers, in this video I want to really expand our setup by allowing a 10 gigabit ethernet connection between our machines. By default, Hetzner has a 1 gigabit connection around their data center. Now 1 gigabit is actually not that bad, but it can get really annoying for data, especially Ceph. Ideally for Ceph, you want at least 10 gigabits per second data transfer between the different Ceph nodes, especially if you have SSDs for Ceph nodes. If you remember previously, I set up NVMe drives. Realistically, for NVMe, you're going to need a lot faster than 10 gigabit per second connection. But if you want data on SSD, you'll need 10 gigabit per second. Otherwise, you're just going to completely saturate your one gigabit line. In fact, Ceph recommends you have 10 gigabit just for normal cluster operations regardless anyway. So how do we do this? If we come here, we can see the possible upgrades we can have for our dedicated machines. And this is my favorite page on Hetzner's website, as we can see all of our goodies that we can install. So at the beginning, it describes all of the different upgrades for the servers. Um, but my favorite bit, if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, they're describing the RAM, they're describing the hard drives, but all the way at the bottom, we have miscellaneous. This is the coolest stuff. So for example, we can add a 10 gigabit NIC into our server and we can wire that up with a 10 gigabit LAN connection. And if we come down, we can also have a 10 gigabit switch. So what this would mean is we can have all of our servers inside of the same rack, all connected to the same switch, so they can have a local LAN between them. Because this will be an additional NIC, an additional network card, then we can still have our one gigabit uplink to the internet, while having a 10 gigabit connection internally. You can also additionally have a 10 gigabit dedicated uplink. The downside of this is you will lose out on your ability to use the Hetzner firewall, which isn't that bad. We can just do the firewall another way. But the reason why I don't want to do this in my case is I don't need that extra uplink speed. I just want to have a fast connection inside of my cluster. And personally, I wouldn't use this as an alternative to our 10 gigabit LAN solution because I don't want my outgoing connection to saturate Ceph. I would like Ceph or my internal networking to have its own dedicated network. So if I was personally, this is my personal belief, if I was to use the 10 gigabit dedicated uplink, I would also want to have a 10 gigabit LAN connection so they can be separated and not saturate each other. But that's up to you how you wish to do that. So what you need to do if you want to take advantage of this is you need to make a support ticket to Hetzner. All you have to do is go to the support tab on your server and then you come down here, you go to other and then you describe to them what you're wanting to do. If you have multiple servers with Hetzner, which is the point of this example, then you can list all of your servers here, say you want them all in the same rack. And you, what you can also do is you can also reserve extra instances on that rack. So later on, you can say, I would like to have another server added to my cluster. We can use that rack reservation I have already made and they will set that up for you. It usually takes about a day or two for them to properly do it. So if there's something that interests you, then come back when you've done that. But we're going to now set this up. Now in this video, I'm going to keep my IP addresses a bit more secret than I did in the previous video. And the reason is, is because when you do this, they're going to give you whole new IP addresses to use. So the reason why I was so public with my IP addresses previously is I don't use those IP addresses anymore. That's all been wiped out. And now I have a whole new set of IP addresses. So. Once you've done that, it's quite simple to set up. Personally, I actually just reinstalled Proxmox from scratch because it was easier than messing up with an initial installation. And I didn't want to mess around with any sort of lingering roots or setups that I had. But the difference we need to make is I have this redacted here because like I said, now I'd like to keep it a bit more uh, secret. So I have this redacted file that we can look at together. Okay, so what am I doing here? Just like before I'm initializing my necessary loopback addresses, and then I'm initializing my physical addresses. And this is quite important because we need to figure out which interface we have been given for which network card, because one is going to be 10 gigabit and one is still going to be on one gigabit. So the way that I do this is I can list all of my network cards here, but this doesn't necessarily help me know the speed of them. In order to know the speed of the network card, I can use the ftool command. So when I do F tool and I put in the interface, I can see all the different information about it. And I can see ENP one SO is 10 gigabits here. And obviously just to prove that there's a difference, I can do seven SO. And we can see here that it's a uh, one gigabit for this one. If you want to migrate from your current setup rather than installing from scratch, like I did, 
then what you'll have to do is you'll have to boot into rescue mode, figure out which interface you now need to make your public one, get your new IP address information, and go to your network interfaces file and update that information, because otherwise you're not going to have internet connectivity to your machine. So if we go back to my network interfaces code, we can see that I initialize these two interfaces. Then I have this block here for importing other non-Proxmox interfaces. This is also important if you want to do software-defined networking with Proxmox. Then we come down to our Proxmox interfaces. You'll see that I've renamed VMBR0 to WAN0. And the reason why I did this is I want to make sure I don't accidentally use this for virtual machines. When you spin up a virtual machine, it gives it a dedicated MAC address that's been randomly generated. If Hetzner sees you using a randomly generated MAC address because you're putting it onto their network, which is what will happen if you use this interface, then they're going to send you an email thinking that you're trying to abuse the system, like you're trying to spoof your MAC address and pretend you're someone you are not, right? So by not giving this VMBR0 as a name or in that structure, then this interface is not going to appear in the Proxmox GUI at all. So as before, you just define the IP address here. I'm specifically defining my MAC address here, just to be clear which NIC I wanted this interface on. And one thing I didn't tell you how to do in the previous tutorial is if you want to have IPv6 support, you do it like this and you just get your IPv subnet, and I've spelled subnet wrong, but you just get your IPv6 subnet from your Hetzner console, and you put that there. Now we come down to VMBR1. I've skipped zero because if in the future I want to make this zero, this is in my head VMBR0, right? So with a VMBR1, I am now setting up differently from before because now we're pointing it to the MAC address of our other interface. And we're now specifically saying it's using the bridge port of that interface too. So this is now going to be fully bound to that new NIC, which is 10 gigabits per second. I'm giving it an address here, and this is going to be the address of the nodes themselves. So the literal physical Hetzner nodes. So this will be their internal networking IP address. And what I'm doing here is I'm just creating 10 arbitrary internal networks. So I can segregate things out because I made a mistake in the previous video by making a wrong recommendation, but we'll get to that in a moment. So if we come down here, we'll see that I am now, just like before, I'm setting up my NAT routing rules here. So this allows any virtual machine that's created with this interface to be able to connect to the internet. And that's it. You'll see it's a lot simpler than the previous configuration. And that's because we're not doing anything regarding VLANs or anything like that. And everything is all nicely in its own network. So it's really simple compared to previously. So once we've done that, you'll see here I've got a two node cluster. Right now, I still haven't rebuilt my whole cluster, but this is good enough for now. So first things first, let's talk about the mistake I made in the previous video. I recommended you to use IP tables to restrict access to Proxmox. And when I did that, I didn't realize that by doing that, I would have disabled the ability to for Proxmox to manage its own firewall, as these rules cannot live in tandem. So what you need to do if you followed my previous tutorial is to remove IP tables persistent. Now I've already done this, so it's got nothing to do, but you need to remove this configuration. And we still want to have these rules, but we're going to define them inside of the GUI itself. So if we come up to data center, we can come down to firewall. Now don't turn on the firewall yet, because if you just turn on the firewall, then you're locked out. But what you want to do is you want to come down to IP set. And in IP set, we're going to define all of our IP groups that we want to make firewall rules on. So for example, here I have Cloudflare and I've manually gone in and populated this list based on all the IP addresses that Cloudflare uses. For DNS, I've gone in and I've populated all the DNS providers that I want my system to support. Under management, I have specifically defined my IP address, so my dedicated work IP address. And what I also have defined here is the private network. IP address, so I can build a firewall rule around that. And I have different network addresses, so I can have some example networks to show you firewall rules for. Once you've created those IP sets, you can come over to firewall here, and we want to add these firewall rules. We do this by adding a rule like this. We want to specify the direction, the action, which is accept, and the various rules. So for example, for DNS, we would have protocol, UDP, source, and I'll say here DNS, and we'll have the source port as 53 like this. And this would, for example, create that rule that we need. So you see, I've already got it, so it's just duplicating a rule. 
Uh, to enable it, you have to tick on here. I'm going to remove this rule. What I have done already is I've created a rule for UDP with the source port of 53. I've created a rule for Cloudflare, which is for the time synchronization with the source port of 123. And I've opened up port 22, which is SSH, and 8006 for me to connect from my work machine. And then once I've done that, we can go to options and turn on the firewall. You won't know immediately if things work because it takes the firewall usually around 10 seconds to synchronize. If you had not removed the IP tables thing, then this never synchronizes. What I also recommend to make sure that you don't have any lingering issues is probably restart your machine at this point, just to make sure that the IP tables persistent configuration isn't still somehow running in the background or messing up with Proxmox's firewall. But once you've done that, then this firewall functionality should work perfectly. So this is the better way of setting it up. Now we have it working, let's actually show off the firewall. So if we go down to security groups, we can create different security groups for our different networks. So if you remember in the other page, I defined all my different networks, I can define security groups for them. I have my main security group here, which is network private, which is going to encompass the whole main subnet. And in here, I have two rules. The first one is out. We're specifying that we're only going to allow outwards connections if the IP address properly came from inside of this subnet. And the reason why we're doing this is we're trying to tackle IP spoofing. I'm going to allow outwards connections if it comes from within our subnet, right? For inwards connections, I only want people inside of that main subnet to be able to talk to each other. So we're saying here that I'm only going to allow inwards connections if it comes from another machine within that subnet and is going to another machine within that subnet. So we're being very strict here about the communication direction. And now for my different networks, I've basically repeated the same exercise. I'm basically saying that, you know, if we're connecting outwards, it must come from the proper IP address. And for inwards connections, it's only allowing connections from within that subnet. And I have literally just repeated this for network two, network three, network four. So before we actually get into the virtual machines, let's talk about the nodes, because I want to put the nodes on the firewall first. In Proxmox, the firewall is a layered approach, and you can have the firewall on each different type of layer. So right now we've enabled the firewall on the data center. Now I want to enable it on the node. So I click on my nodes, and I go down to uh, firewall, and I want to add my private network security group, which we just defined before. So basically, I'm going to say that we can only communicate to this node if it comes from a private IP address in that range that I have specified for all of my private networks. And once again, we want to come down to options and enable the firewall on this level. If you don't enable the firewall on each level, it won't do anything on that relevant level. And now we want to create three virtual machines. So I have three virtual machines here. And what we want to do for those is we want to have the firewall as well. So we go to the virtual machines, go to firewall. And I've just, you know, you just go to insert security group. You define the security group again. I just have it here. So this is going to be on network three. I know because it's 10.3. This is how I'm just going to separate the networks easily. And I put it on that security group. I'm also going to specify the interface here. And we get the interface from when we are in hardware we can specify the interface to this here. So this is important if you want to have multiple network interfaces and you only want to have this block on this interface because the other network might have different IP ranges that it's inside of. So what I also usually like to do is I like to change the default output policy to also drop. So we have to specifically open it up in our firewall, make sure our firewall's on. Now, if we go to our machine um, and we properly set up the networking. So in this example, I've set it up to 10.3.0.100 with the gateway 10.3.0.1. And I'm going to ping the internet just like this. If I was to try to connect to a network I'm not allowed in. So if I was to try to go to network number four, sneakily, just like this, and apply. I should no longer be able to connect to the internet. So you can see here is, is understanding I'm trying to spoof my IP address. I'm trying to connect into a network I'm not allowed to connect into, and it's blocking the connection. I can go back here, and I can put my IP address back onto the three range. And so I have this machine set up on 10.3.0.100. I can come over to this machine here on a completely different node, which is going to be 10.3.0.101. And this machine should be able to ping my 10.3.0.100 machine. And this communication is going over our 10 gigabit switch in between. So that's pretty cool.
It's a direct communication between machines. Now, what I can also do is I can create a another machine which is on network four. So I've set this machine up on network four. Once again, I have specified in the firewall, it's using network four. So here we go, network four. I can go to the console. And this machine should be unable to ping machines in network three, just like that. So it's unable to ping machines in the other network. This machine should also be able to go out on the internet. So we have created segregated networks in our system. That's good, but we can also take it up a notch. We can also add an extra layer of insurance that people stick to the IP address that we want them to have and don't mess around. So if we go over to our machine, we can come down to firewall and we can turn on IP filter here. And this will make sure that they're only allowed to use the IP address that, that we have specifically said that they can use. So if we go back to console, I can no longer connect to the internet even though I should. And the reason why it doesn't work is I've not actually told Proxmox which IP to filter on. So if I go back down to IP set, the way you do it is you create a new IP set with a specific name, IP filter, and then the network interface. And now I can define which IP address Specifically, you can set a whole block, but I'm going to be extremely specific here. And I'm going to set an IP address like this. Uh, that will take probably about 10 seconds. Usually when you do anything with the firewall, just like expect it to take 10 seconds, but we can see already it's now working again. And if I was to try and change my IP address just to another one inside of the range, which previously I did have the ability to change to, Oh, there we go. It's blocking it because I'm not allowed to use that IP address. So this is a good way of locking people down. And obviously, you know, with the advice I gave you before, I accidentally broke the firewall for you. So hopefully this is a good way of make me making it up to you by teaching you how to do this. So I hope this video has been quite interesting. And this wraps up my little series on installing Proxmox on Hetzner. This isn't going to be my final video on Proxmox. I'm going to make a loads more videos. I want to make videos on the software defined networking side, especially when it comes to VXLANs and EVPNs. So if that interests you, please check them out. Anyway, that's it for me from this year. And I hope you guys have a lovely Christmas and a happy new years. And it's been a lovely time sharing this knowledge with you. As always, I hope you guys have a lovely day and thanks for watching. Cheers.